The provided JavaScript code appears to be for a web application named IEEG underscore spectrum underscore 16 underscore chan underscore denoise underscore music. This app seems to process electroencephalography, EEG, data to create a visual and auditory experience. Key features of the code include Initialization, the app initializes when the DOM content is fully loaded. It sets up various UI elements like sliders, selectors, and tuples. Data handling and rendering, the main functionality revolves around fetching EEG data based on user inputs, like channel selection, window size, etc., and rendering this data visually using Plotly, a popular graphing library. Audio processing, the app also includes an audio context for playing sounds. It maps EEG data to musical notes, which are then played back as sound frequencies. User interactions, several event listeners are attached to UI elements, enabling dynamic updating of the displayed data and sound output based on user interactions. Wavelet denoising, there's an option for wavelet denoising, suggesting the app applies wavelet transforms for signal processing. Spectrum analysis, the app appears to display both raw EEG signals and their frequency spectrums, giving users insights into the spectral characteristics of the EEG data. Data endpoints, different endpoints are used for fetching data depending on whether the app is in a production environment or running locally. Error handling, the code includes basic error handling, especially for fetching data and audio processing. SNR and MSE outputs, signal to noise ratio, SNR, and mean squared error, MSE, are calculated and displayed, indicating some form of signal quality or denoising effectiveness measurement. The code is structured to handle user inputs, process EEG data, and provide an interactive visual and auditory representation of this data. Yeah, so we have this JavaScript that we were working on for a while now. And we actually came to a point where we started uh, from scratch uh, using a code for a different application. So now it's working okay. It's uh, 226 lines of code. I actually removed all the um, empty lines and comments uh, from it because that's essentially what the uh, GPT-4 uh, was just uh, explaining this code so it would potentially have uh, more questions about it later but just so that GPT has the whole context uh, we also have this uh, Flask application Python code. Some of the functions are not being used. I don't know why we again removed any spaces and comments uh, from it. We only had that comment at the top. And we pop it into a GPT-4 as well. Let's see what it says. And we run it as well. It's currently running locally. Plan to deploy it sometime very soon. So that's what the front page looks like. It those been explained before. They are remnants of uh, previous applications that are already deployed. Uh, this one, the new feature is that it's also converting this uh, EEG into sound. So that's how it sounds like when you uh, scroll through this file, channel 7. So this is the whole um, segment has a seizure in it on different channels. So this uh, channel 14 actually sounds a uh, more interesting. It's need to be made wider. I'm trying to select 10, I'm having trouble. Let's keep it 14, it shouldn't matter much. Uh, 
So that's what the seizure sounded like. Can try a different window. About five seconds. So essentially kind of can hear what the the difference between the seizure and no seizure but yes it's not great we'll be trying to improve it in the future it's the description of the python code the provided Python script is for a Flask web application, part of the IEEG underscore spectrum underscore 16 underscore chan underscore denoise underscore music project. This application processes and displays intracranial EEG, IEEG, data with a focus on noise reduction and spectrum analysis. Key components of the script include Flask setup. The application is built using the Flask framework, a popular choice for web applications in Python. Data loading and preparation. The app loads EEG data from a text file and prepares it for processing. This includes setting parameters like sampling frequency, start time, and duration. Butworth bandpass filter. Functions are defined for creating and applying a Butworth bandpass filter, which is used to isolate specific frequency bands in the EEG data. Endpoint definitions. The root endpoint serves the main HTML page. Get underscore data. Endpoint handles requests for EEG data processing and visualization. It takes various parameters from the request, such as the time window, EEG channel, and whether to apply wavelet denoising. Wavelet denoising. The app optionally applies wavelet denoising to the EEG data, which is a method for reducing noise in signals. Spectrum analysis. The app performs spectrum analysis on the EEG data, both for the whole spectrum and specific frequency bands, delta, theta, alpha, beta, using the Welch method. Signal visualization. The processed EEG data, both original and denoised, is prepared for visualization, including the computation of signal-to-noise ratio, SNR, and mean squared error, MSE. JSON response. The endpoint returns a JSON object containing the processed data, including raw signals, spectrums, SNR, and MSE, which can be used for rendering visualizations on the client side. Main execution. The script runs the Flask app in debug mode when executed directly. This application appears to be a sophisticated tool for analyzing and visualizing EEG data, with a focus on noise reduction and frequency analysis. The integration with a web interface suggests it's designed for interactive use, allowing users to select different parameters and view the corresponding EEG data and its analysis. Yes, yeah, so one, one, one of the problems, for example, for future improvement is the fact that the uh, wavelet denoising doesn't actually make uh, much difference. It doesn't make a difference at all for, in terms of the sound. It makes a little bit of difference. Yeah, you can actually see the difference of it there. Yeah, this is two of them overlaid on top of one another. You can see it even more. And how different wavelets are doing. This one's giving an air and why. Seems like by orthogonal a uh, one point one makes the larger difference. Yeah, if the trending is off, the filtering doesn't really work.
There's also this crackling noise when nodes are changing. It's only happening when scrolling. We actually tried addressing it yesterday. So I'm wondering, wondering now if uh, uh, Python was the last code that was uploaded to ChatGPT. If uh, if I ask any questions now, it will try and address them through Python code instead of uh, JavaScript. I don't know. There is a bit of crackling noise when nodes are changing. So when scrolling through the EEG file, there's some sort of uh, sound interference. Seem to be between the different nodes. The crackling noise you're experiencing when scrolling through the EEG file and triggering different notes could be due to several factors related to audio processing in your application. Here are some potential causes and solutions. Audio buffering issues. If the audio buffers are not being handled smoothly when switching between notes, it can result in a crackling sound. Ensure that the transitions between audio buffers are seamless. Yeah, I think we checked it yesterday. It wasn't there buffering but uh, something else it's essentially now um, I don't know if you can hear it but uh, it's doing some sort of decay so it's not just turning the uh, note off when it's playing uh, but there should be a function for it There's some sort of delay. Hey, why don't I see that code? Actually, unusual. It should be a change in play frequency. This function, yeah, this ramp. I wonder if this.
What's it called? Ramp? Right, yeah, this duration. Uh, so if we increase that. It's not working as expected. Making any difference? Yeah, we need to see. Or any magic uh, numbers. This duration is longer. Yeah, there's this crackling sound between. Uh, when scrolling. I think channel 14 or something had something more interesting. Yeah, well, I don't know if you can hear it as well, but yeah, I want to get rid of that crackling sound between notes. What could it be? Audio buffering issue. Ensure that the transitions between audio buffers are seamless. Rapid frequency changes. Sudden changes in frequency can cause a crackling noise. Implementing a smooth transition or a fade in, fade out effect between notes can help. Overlapping notes. If multiple notes are being played simultaneously or if a new note starts before the previous one has completely finished, it can cause interference. Implement a mechanism to stop the previous note before starting a new one. Volume peaks, high volume levels or sudden volume changes can lead to distortion. Apply normalization or dynamic range compression to manage volume levels. Waveform discontinuities. If the waveform of your audio signal has discontinuities, sharp edges, it can produce a crackling sound. Using waveforms with smooth transitions like sine waves can mitigate this. Yeah, we are using four uh, sine waves playing at the same time. So this tells you how the mapping is actually happening. Notes to play can go.
stopwatch power The normal power range should be, it should be from zero to one, should it? Let's turn the code. What normalized power range? should be Based on the JavaScript code you provided earlier, the normalized power range for each EEG frequency band, delta, theta, alpha, beta, appears to be between 0 and 1. This is inferred from the normalized power function in the code. Here's a brief breakdown of how the normalization is done. Yes, yeah, so those numbers are way too small. Power array aggregation. The function takes an array of power values for a specific EEG frequency band and computes the average power. Make it over here, get okay, control of five. Yeah, that's the thing. The first this power value is way too small. I've had the the amplitudes as well. Power array aggregation. The function takes an array of power values for a specific EEG frequency band and computes the average power. Clamping. The aggregated power is then clamped between a minimum, min power, and a maximum, max power value. In your code, min power is set to zero, and max power is set to 3000. Normalization. The clamped power value is normalized to a range of zero to one using the formula. This normalized power is then used for further processing, such as mapping to musical notes. The normalization process ensures that the power values are scaled to a consistent range, which is important for comparing values across different segments of EEG data or different EEG channels. Numbers seem to be too small. 
These values fall within the expected range of 0 to 1, as per the normalization process described in your code. The normalization ensures that the power levels of different EEG frequency bands are scaled to uniform range, making them comparable and suitable for further analysis or mapping to other modalities, like musical notes in your application. The values indicate the relative power within each frequency band as a fraction of the defined maximum power, which was 3000 in your code. Lower values suggest lower power within that specific frequency band. For instance, the delta band has the highest normalized power among the four, though it's still quite low in absolute terms, suggesting that the overall power in the EEG signal for this segment is relatively low across all bands. If we adjust the maximum power to 2000 instead of 3000. So yeah, this normalized power for a delta band is uh, higher. It's going up to 15k. But this number is very low. Let's go to twelve again. Right, so now it's uh, more sensitive and these numbers go, you get some larger, closer to one values as well. So let me know is it better or not. But essentially became way more sensitive. It actually shows you the exact uh, mapping. Reducing 
a maximum power from 3000 to 100 what would this do Reducing the maximum power in the normalization process from 3000 to 100 will have a significant impact on the normalized power values of your EEG frequency bands. Here's what you can expect. Higher normalized values, since the denominator in your normalization formula becomes smaller, max power, min power, the resulting normalized values will be higher for the same raw power measurements. This is because you're compressing the range of possible raw power values into a smaller scale. Increase sensitivity to changes. With a lower maximum power value, small changes in the raw power will result in more significant changes in the normalized power. This can make the system more sensitive to minor variations in the EEG signal. I was saying, sorry, my microphone was muted, but I was saying it's not clipping, so could make system more sensitive to minor variations, potential clipping. Potential for clipping. If the raw power values exceed the new maximum power, 100 in this case, they will be clipped to the maximum during the clamping step. This means all power values above 100 will be treated as 100 in the normalization process, potentially losing some granularity in the higher range of the power spectrum. Right, so it's not clipping in this particular case, but yes, it might clip if uh, our signals, I don't know, if this power goes higher than uh, this is currently 20k. Impact on further processing. Since the normalized power values are used for further processing, like mapping to musical notes, you can expect a more pronounced and varied response in this subsequent processing. For instance, if you're using these values to control aspects of music or visualization, the changes might become more dramatic or noticeable. Right, yeah, they're definitely more noticeable. Adjusting for realistic EEG power levels, if the actual power levels of your EEG data are generally much lower than 3000. Reducing the maximum power to a more realistic value like 100 might provide a normalization that is more representative of the actual power distribution in the EEG signal. Using the maximum power to more realistic level like 100 might provide a normalized normalization that is more representative of actual power distribution. Yeah, so this power distribution, the normalized power distribution is more realistic, yes. In summary, reducing the maximum power value in the normalization process will make the system more responsive to changes in the EEG power levels, but it may also increase the risk of clipping for higher power values. This adjustment should be made carefully, considering the typical power range of your EEG data and the desired sensitivity of your application. So that's what uh, 
seizure sounds like on channel 15 a clip over there to the bit more power in there I also try to see what effect window size has why is it only two powers ah no it is clipping Right, so it is clipping on channel 14. This is the problem. Yes, yeah, so when the mapping power. is uh, one that means the normalized power is clipping I don't know how bad is it because it's still playing a note and let's just double check it should be playing the highest note using index 36 playing as uh, c6 check the code index 36 e6 yes yeah, so it's playing the highest uh, the highest note in the delta range it should be also playing the highest note in theta range in alpha range the mapping power, the power, the normalized power is 0.57, which translates into G5. So G5 should be somewhere a bang a, in the middle of uh, between E3 and E6, I think. Just assume that is correct. Anyway, reducing this max power. It's actually a magic number because it's not a maximum power. It's the maximum normalized power. Anyway, but it's resulting in um, normalized numbers between 0 and 1. So we had a description of that already, I think, yesterday. Try Copilot and co -pilot to explain this. So for each type of brainwave, a band, a frequency band within the EG, the normalized power is passed to the map power to node function. Normalized power of delta waves is mapped to node between C4, C3 to C6. Yeah, that's correct inside the map power to node function they get node range 
function is going to get an array of all the nodes. Get node range, start node, end node. Let's start this again. We have channel 7 as default. It's not the most interesting one, uh, music wise. Uh, 15 sounds a bit better. Let's try 13. We haven't tried 13. So windows has obviously matters a lot. Let's try with five seconds. You can also use your keyboards. I think there's an obvious overlap. Yeah, there. Yeah, they overlap quite a bit. That's the other problem. Yeah, we actually should have something that changes by how much uh, the scroll is moving. It should depend on the window size. So if we have the standard a uh, 10 second, we move across. So you can, uh, well, anyway, you can use your keyboard or mouse. There is an overlap um, in the scrolling, which is kind of obvious. We can change that. So on one hand, we want to keep as many things as default uh, as possible. On the, on the other hand, we want to give you more control over how this works. So let me know what you think. Essentially, all these variables 
a could be made a can I find well they're not constant but they are well I call them magic numbers but the See if it understands. Magic numbers uh, in programming is a numeric value that is used in the code without any explanation <laughs> of what it represents. That's right. Here's the magic numbers in the provided code. File scroller. Yes, this file scroller is important. We have the volume, the volume seems to be okay. Well, yeah, that's the one I can let you adjust, like the user to adjust. Actually, that's probably not a bad idea. Duration, yeah, could let the... Uh, hey, we could have a slider for the duration as well. Ah, no, the yeah, 10 is passing into base 10, so no, that is explainable. That's not magic. A uh, volume duration is uh, uh, magic numbers. We can just let the user control those. Yes, 1000, if it's converting from seconds to milliseconds, it's not a, it's not a magic number as well, because we know why it's uh, 1000. Yeah, those are magic numbers. The zero for min and max, uh, normalized power, minimum and maximum power values used for normalization. The 100 there is a magic number. That will be harder to explain. Why is it 100? That eleven. Start node index. This is the index of the last node in the nodes array. Why? Well, because there's eleven of those. I don't know why there's eleven of those. Yeah, we did explain this uh, yesterday. Well, GPT-4 explained it yesterday. I didn't quite understand it. I have 49. It's a constant using a formula to convert a note to a frequency. Um, yeah, we'll figure. These three and one looks like magic numbers to me, but it seem to just work. Yeah, we might add the volume and duration at this stage. That's how all uh, channels uh, sound like.
Yeah, I don't think we look at the channel one as well. It's not clipping for oh, channel one. I don't know if it sounds any better or worse. We also ideally have a selection of the musical instrument. And eventually we want to extract some other features, not just the a power in each frequency band. and turn them into and uh, map them into peach and temba How is uh, mapping EG to music currently happening? I don't know if this is a generic response. Certainly. Let's look at both the JavaScript and Python Flask code and suggest some improvements for each. Optimize performance for large datasets. If the EEG data can be large, consider optimizing how the data is processed and rendered. For example, use web workers for data processing to avoid blocking the main thread. Refactor repeated code. The fetch data and render function contains repeated blocks of code for setting up plot configurations. This can be refactored into a separate function to improve readability and maintainability. Improve error handling. Add more robust error handling, especially for network requests and data processing. Display user-friendly error messages in the UI if something goes wrong. 
UI responsiveness, ensure that the UI remains responsive when data is being fetched or processed. Indicators like loading spinners can be helpful. Audio processing, investigate and address the crackling noise issue during note transitions. Consider using a library like Tone, JS for more sophisticated audio processing capabilities. Code documentation, add comments to complex sections of the code to make it easier for others, or yourself in the future, to understand the logic and flow. Code organization, separate the data processing logic from the flask groups. This could involve creating a dedicated module or class for handling EEG data processing. Error handling, improve error handling in the flask groups. Catch potential exceptions, especially when dealing with file operations or external libraries. Input validation, add more comprehensive validation for the query parameters in the get underscore data root. Ensure that the inputs are within expected ranges and types. Optimize data loading, Loading large data files can be resource intensive. Consider using a more efficient data storage format like HDF5 or implement caching mechanisms to reduce load times. Use of global variables. The data variable is loaded globally. This can be problematic for larger data sets and can affect scalability. Consider loading data on demand or using a database. RESTful API design. Make sure your API follows RESTful principles. This includes using proper HTTP methods, status codes, and structuring endpoints logically. Unit tests. Add unit tests for data processing functions. This ensures that any changes in the code do not break existing functionality. Configuration management. Move configuration settings, like fs, start underscore time underscore in underscore seconds, etc., to a separate configuration file or use environment variables. This makes it easier to modify settings without changing the code. Logging. Implement logging to capture important events, errors, and debugging information. This will be invaluable for maintenance and troubleshooting. Both sets of code could benefit greatly from these improvements, enhancing performance, maintainability, and user experience. Certainly. Magic numbers in programming refer to numbers that appear in the code without clear explanation, making the code hard to understand and maintain. Here's a list of magic numbers from the provided JavaScript and Python Flask code. 10 in const second value equals pass int, file scroller. Value, 10, base for parsing string to integer. 0 0.5 in gain node. Gain, set value at time, volume, audio context. Current time, initial gain value for the audio node. 0 0.03 in play frequency. Frequency, volume equals 0 0.03, duration equals 1.2, default volume level for playing a frequency. 1.2 in play frequency. Frequency, volume equals 0 0.03, duration equals 1.2, default duration for playing a frequency. 0 0.2 in gain node. Gain. Linear RAM to value at time. 0. Audio context. Current time plus duration 0 0.2. Time before the end of the duration to start ramping down the volume. 1000 in set timeout. Equals greater than. Oscillator. Stop. Duration asterisk 1000. Millisecond conversion factor. 2 in multiplier equals 2 used in the wavelet denoising section. 0 0.5, 4, 8, 13, 30 in the band underscore ranges definition. Specific frequency values for EEG bands. 400 in FS equals 400 sampling frequency. 31,610 in start underscore time underscore in underscore seconds equals 31,610 start time for data loading in seconds. 110 in duration underscore to underscore load underscore in underscore seconds equals 100 in duration underscore to underscore display underscore initially underscore in underscore seconds equals 10 durations for data loading and initial display. 5 in def butter underscore band pass, low cut, high cut, fs, order equals 5, default order for the butt width filter. 0 0.5 in nyq equals 0 0.5 asterisk fs, used to calculate the Nyquist frequency. 2 in multiplier equals 2 within the get underscore data root for wavelet denoising. 3000 in the normalization process, maximum power value for normalization. 0 0.5, 4, 8, 13, 30 in the band underscore ranges definition, specific frequency values for EEG bands. In both cases, replacing these magic numbers with well-named constants or configuration parameters would enhance the readability and maintainability of the code. For example, you might replace 400 with sampling underscore frequency or 10 with default underscore window underscore duration to make the code's intent clearer.
we might continue this next time. Let me know if there's any relevant questions. Hopefully the tool will become available on binarychaos.com in this week or next week. And I'll see you later.